Hello everyone. It is March 19th today. I realize it's been quite some time since I made a video of any length. Like I haven't even posted a short since last fall. There's some explanation for that. After I finished seeding last spring, I wanted to start spraying, but my sprayer just wasn't as field ready as I was led to believe by the prior owners. And by the time I had my sprayer fit to roll, it was too late. I ended up having to hire out my spray. And come fall, I thought, oh, I should be able to film some of the fall activities. But unlike some of the other YouTubers, I just couldn't figure out how to run equipment with two hands while also filming with my phone. It just, it wasn't working. So I ordered a headset so I can have my phone strapped to my head so at least I'll be able to have some, some operator perspective and driving perspective. But I guess uh, to bring us up to the present, I got a call from the Grand Elevator this morning saying my target for canola was hit. So I've got to clear some snow in my farmyard and uh, load the semi and I'll start trucking. Here's to the first attempt at using this, uh, this head mount phone holder. Hopefully you guys can see something half decent. So it'll be some trial and error to get the the phone angle correct so something can actually be seen. It's a rather slow job clearing this yard with this tractor. It's only a 10 foot bucket and my yard is roughly 200 yards square so it's not not exactly small. If I were to clear the whole yard after a six inch dump of snow it would take me roughly three days of running this tractor about 12 hours a day. I would really enjoy having something different, such as a, maybe a 14 foot dozer blade on something. I made some recent equipment changes. Uh, in November, I bought myself my first ever semi truck. It's a 2006 Freightliner Classic, powered by a Mercedes MBE 4000. It's an 18 speed transmission and four way lockers. It's a day cab truck with a short frame. I'm really quite excited about it. And tomorrow when I start hauling grain to my uh, elevator of choice, that will be its first ever voyage for me. Aside from the day that I drove it home from Edmonton um, a couple months ago. Recently I bought another four wheel drive tractor I'd kind of like to leave it a surprise until spring to, to show everybody what it is. If that tractor that I recently purchased, it's, it's not new by any means, but if it, uh, if it proves to not be a piece of junk after running it for a year, I will strongly consider putting a dozer blade on it because I don't like having to take three days to clear my yard. That's just, that's just too long. And heaven forbid the, uh, the dump of snow amount to more than six inches, well, needless to say, it will take more than three days to clear the yard. Um, let me know in the comments below if, you, um, if you're satisfied with the angle of the camera from this perspective, or if you think I should do something different. I recall seeing in one of my prior videos, somebody wanted to know more of the history of the farm and how I'm involved. Um, I may as well start from day one. My farm was established on record in 1906 by my great grandfather. He immigrated from Germany. From my great grandfather, my grandfather Charlie took over sometime shortly before the Second World War. And then from Charlie, it transitioned to my father. His name is Bill. And he ran the show uh, from the time he was 21, which uh, I'll have to do some math. Uh, but anyways, he retired in fall 2018, or fall 2017, um, in his early 60s. The farm kind of sat in limbo after he retired. He rented out the land, and then in July 2018, he had a rather large farm dispersal auction, which uh, it was a Ritchie Brothers auction. 
um, in, in which uh, most of his equipment was sold. Um, he didn't sell any land, he didn't sell any bins, but just, just most of his equipment. My love of farming made it so that I was not satisfied with more or less his retirement decision. So after a couple of years of fairly steadily, fairly steady harassment, he agreed to rent me some land. So in fall 2020, he gave me a rental agreement and I abandoned uh, my first quarter of land ever in my name. Previous to that, the only farming that I had done was more or less as a hired hand to my father, as, as well as some friends, but still a hired hand nonetheless. Um, I grew my first crop in spring of 2021 and I've just been slowly expanding the farm ever since. I've made some equipment purchases. Um, I own my own my own pull type combine. I had a case 2594 and I sold it. I bought another four wheel drive. I bought a tandem truck in the summertime, a tandem grain truck from a good friend of mine. Um, the, the farm is slowly but surely making some advancements. I have an increase, a substantial increase in acres yet again for this coming crop year. Quite, a, quite, look, quite excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it. I unfortunately didn't finish all of my anhydrous banding last fall, so I still have about 1,500 acres left of anhydrous to do this spring, which is not uh, not ideal. Hence, my interest in buying a second furrow drive as previous to this this year. Um, I was able to do all of my anhydrous banding in the fall and that meant that my four-wheel drive tractor only had to seed in the spring, which worked really, really well. But now that there's some most of my anhydrous to do in the spring in addition to seeding, it just made sense to buy another four-wheel drive rather than having to do most of my anhydrous before I get any start in seeding. And then, and then start seeding. I really don't want to be seeding into June, which is likely what would have happened. My father has graciously agreed to help me again this coming spring. Um, his favorite job before he retired always was running the air drill. So his task this spring will be running the Case 9150, pulling my Burgo hoe drill. All the while, I will be running the anhydrous unit, pulling the, um, the Burgo chisel plow, which I guess was another acquisition of last, last spring. If you have any other questions regarding the history of my farm, please, uh, please um, put them in the comments. I would be happy to answer them. Last fall, I only grew canola, so of course I only have canola to haul um, this winter. I have 11,000 bushels of canola to get rid of. Um, I can take 1,300 bushels in a load with my semi, so it equates to roughly nine loads, uh, which I will be hauling to um, uh, Richardson Pioneer at Humboldt um, over the next couple days. I'm, I'm assuming I'll average three loads a day. I'm not entirely certain about the lineups, but. I'm hoping for three loads a day. I do not believe the elevator will let me do any filming on the premises, but I will surely find out. And if you see in this video that there is a, um, elevator time, well, then you'll know that I got permission. So this is that new semi I talked about. First semi that I ever bought myself. The other the Peter built that I was using in the spring is my dad's last semi. This is my first. 2006 Freightliner Classic. I'm gonna start loading the truck here. I thought I may as well video some before I start the auger because you're not gonna be able to hear, hear me over the top of the auger motor. It's too loud.
I've got the headset on again. Hopefully this works. Just turn it on when I approach the highway. about 32 metric tons of canola on it's about legal weight for this truck and trailer combination it's a pretty good load when I'm stopped I'll go on Google and I'll do a conversion into pounds for my American viewers I don't think anywhere in the States can you pull a triaxle trailer with this with this kind of truck and haul that legally My second load for the day. Uh, I've got after this one should be about seven loads to go. Hour and 15 minute drive ish from my farm to the elevator. Should take me a couple days to get this done. I'm estimating three, maybe four days. The elevator but uh, appears to be I'm a bit early there's nobody else here yet truck worked flawlessly this morning from my my trip from the farm to here well just finished another day of hauling I managed to take three loads into Humboldt today Despite some issues with the truck, uh, it's reading high voltage and the temperature gauge is off the charts, but I don't see any actual proof of either because the battery should have been fried if it was producing 20 volts and the coolant isn't boiling over and there isn't a check engine light on. So I have some electrical gremlins to work through. Other than that, truck seemed to work okay. Be hauling for at least another couple days. If you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe for more.